Hi guys, welcome to this new video. So I've had a subscriber asking me to help design an helical antenna. An helical antenna, this is this kind of antenna where you have a spiral, a metallic spiral with a backplane. This is a 5.8 gigahertz helical antenna. So that's obviously not the format and size that we will be using for LoRaWAN because we, are, we will be working in the 870 megahertz band. So this is a much smaller frequency, so a much higher wavelength and therefore a much bigger antenna. So in order to do this, we will go through some uh, theory. I've uh, made quite a lot of research online on lots of different websites and also I've played with lots of simulators. I've spent hours and hours simulating dozens of use cases and there is something kind of annoying between the theory and the practical results of the simulation and we could even wonder what it's going to be with the real testing of the antenna, I see quite a lot of uh, discrepancies. So we will have to first explain the theory and what are the theoretical dimensions. So to build such an antenna afterwards, I will uh, show how we can print some modeling parts which help model the spiral because you will have to loop around with a copper wire and so to 3D print such a guide is very very helpful. I would say it's almost mandatory. And also the spiral itself will be mechanically supported by two 3D printed pieces. There is an online uh, free software to do this where you enter your dimensioning parameters, so number of turns, uh, diameter of the helix, etc. And it, it comes out with STL files that you can print according to your parameters. So I will also be using some simulation software that I will show you. I've chosen a freeware uh, that uh, you can find on the internet. There are quite a few different ones out there. There are even online calculators, but the online calculators don't show you the radiation pattern. It don't show you the result of the calculation, like the impedance, the VSWR, etc. And in uh, probably next second video, we will try to build the antenna because the problem with simulation software is that you cannot really model all of the practicalities. For example, the distance between the end of the spiral and the ground plane. The fact that the ground plane is not a perfect ground plane. And also we will have to match the impedance of the feeding line, which is supposed to be 50 ohm, into the spiral. But a spiral has a typical impedance way, way outside the 50 ohms. So you need an impedance matching between the uh, feeding line and the base of the spiral itself. Unfortunately, it's kind of trial and error. There are some uh, possible theoretical calculation to match the impedance, but this is way too complex. And I guess we will uh, just use some trial and error to try to, to match to the 50 ohm impedance and get a good VSWR. So let's sit in front of the screen and we'll start designing and dimensioning the helical antenna. We start with the frequency 870 megahertz. The wavelength lambda is given then by the formula speed of light divided by the frequency, which in our case is then 35.5 centimeters or 0.345 meters. The helical antenna consists in a number of spiral turns that we will call N. Looking at the antenna like it is on screen in the vertical position, we will call that vertical position the Z axis. The spiral makes an angle with the horizontal axis called the pitch angle or alpha. So if we look at two successive spirals, they are spaced by a certain spacing distance, S. If we unroll one of these spiral turns, we will get the circumference of one spiral turn that we shall call C, capital C. The spirals have all the same diameter, D, it's a uniform spiral. It would be possible to design antennas where the spirals have uh, digressive diameters, but here we will stick to uniform spirals. So helix antennas can radiate in two ways or modes, either behaving more or less like a dipole antenna. That means that the radiation pattern will be a flattened donut shape, uh, which is perpendicular to the Z axis. This is what we call the normal mode. This is not what we want because in that case, we might as well use a dipole antenna. So what we want is the second mode, the actual mode, where the radiation lobe extends in front of the antenna along its Z axis. 
So the energy is in that case directionally oriented in front of the antenna along that Z axis. This is what we want, obviously, to get a directional long range antenna. To function in the actual mode, the antenna dimensions must follow certain formulas and, and parallel rules, or what we can also say observed best practices. Empirical rules for an actual mode antenna limits the circumference C between three quarters and one and a quarter of the wavelength, lambda. C, the circumference in our case, uh, is then the first parameter that we shall define. We will choose here for the exercise 1.12 uh, the wavelength, which is in dimension 38.62 centimeters or 0.3862 meters. From C, the diameter of the antenna is defined by the formula C equals d times pi. Pi is the constant, obviously, which gives then a diameter of 12.3 centimeters or a radius of 6.15 centimeters. Another best practice and empirical rule says that the optimum pitch angle, alpha, for an actual mode must be between 12 and 14 degrees. So here for this exercise, let's choose it to be 12.8 degrees. Knowing now the alpha angle and C, the circumference, we can derive the spacing S, which is defined by the following formula. S equals tangent of the angle alpha times C, which gives 8.77 centimeters. Also to work in an actual mode, the helical antenna must have a minimum of three turns. And the number of turns is a parameter we can choose. The higher the number of turns, the higher the gain of the antenna, but also the narrower will be the beam width, the beam width of the antenna. And the longer the antenna will be, obviously. So in other words, the number of turns is a choice we have to make as a compromise between more or less turns, so the, the size of the antenna, more or less directional capacity of the antenna, the beam width, and uh, in that case, uh, in this example, we will choose five turns. The antenna overall length is the number of turns times the spacing, which in this case, with the numbers we have taken, is 43.87 centimeters or 0 0.4387 meters. That's it for the theoretical dimensioning of the antenna. In the following video, part two of this video series on building an helix antenna, we will print the 3D model parts and explore an antenna simulator. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.